ChatGPT and other forms of generative AI have taken the world by storm. So I thought I'd share with you several areas where people working in IT can take advantage of this technology and maybe some areas to stay clear of. Hi, I'm Isaac Sokolik. I'm the president of Star CIO, where we help organizations build digital transformations as core organizational competencies. I'm also the author of Driving Digital and Digital Trailblazer. I first learned artificial intelligence and machine learning when I was back in grad school, programming neural networks by hand. And I feel generative AI will be a game changer for organizations over the next few years. How fast is this world moving? Well, tons of news on generative AI just in the last week from GPT-4, Microsoft coming out with Copilot, and Google coming out with Bard. And by the time you watch or read about this, there's probably new news to come. So if you think generative AI is just a fad or go away, there's just too much progress and too much disruption coming from this technology that you must pay attention to it. Now, I've been sharing digital leadership lessons for over a decade. My best practices on driving digital transformation are in my first book, Driving Digital, and my second book, Digital Trailblazer, has my stories and 50 lessons learned on leading transformation efforts. In that book, I share the differences between three forms of transformation, crisis management, strategic, strategic transformation, and digital transformation. And one of the things I say about digital transformation is that it's externally driven, especially when an emerging technology creates market disruption. That's what we're seeing in generative AI, and I'm going to share three examples of how to think about generative AI from the creative to how to use it in IT and how not to use it going forward in the short term. So you should seek out examples of where ChatGPT is being used in the creative areas, being used in a lot of marketing departments. This is one of my favorite examples. Alan Alda, star of MASH, has a great podcast. In the episode here, he actually shares and asks ChatGPT to write an episode of MASH and has Mike Farrell on to do a tabletop reading with them. Alan acknowledges and says, when it tried to make it funny, it came up with some really stupid stuff. So if you want to see ChatGPT, where it's creative and where its limitations are, this is a great example. I've left you the link to this episode in the comments in the Driving Digital stand-up video page. So let's start with an example of maybe where not to use ChatGPT, and it revolves around facts. In this example, I asked ChatGPT to tell it a little bit about myself. Who is Isaac Sokolik? And you can see from the color codes, the green are facts it got right, the reds it got wrong. I then went back to ChatGPT and said, here's what you got wrong, and it kind of regurgitated my answer back. Isaac didn't work for the Wall Street Journal. I'll tell you, I never worked for them. Second thing, I asked him again in a separate chat window, please tell me who Isaac Sokolik again is. He gave me a completely different answer in terms of its pros, got some right things right, still got some things wrong, and I said, what's going on here? Is it getting smarter, or is it just giving me a different answer? I then asked a friend of mine to ask the same question. He got a different set of answers, mostly correct answers. And I can't tell you if it's just getting better at it or if it's just getting lucky and giving correct answers at the end of it. Uh, I've seen a couple interviews with the executives at OpenAI. And you can see here from Mira Murati, she's a CTO at OpenAI. It may make up facts. So this is one area we do a lot of educating inside our organizations. Where should you use ChatGPT? Well, don't expect it to get its facts correct. Their executives are telling you that. And here's an example of potentially where not to use it or examples of things that you shouldn't be doing. So let's talk about in IT three areas where I have used it to some advantages. So I want to share three different examples in IT where you could put ChatGPT to use and how to use it. The first area is in generating code examples. I asked a question about being able to do a fuzzy match, two columns with names. We've seen this before in every data program. It came back and said, use this library. Here's a coding example. I wasn't actually coding. I was trying to find and research an article, ChatGPT and software development. This article is published on InfoWorld where I write three columns every single month. And uh, if you sign up for my newsletter, you'll be able to get access, easy access to that article. Second area, if I need to write a policy for an IT department, do it all the time. I have a large library of policies to start from. But here I was asking ChatGPT to draft a policy on data center access, and it came back with a pretty reasonable starting draft. We did some editing. We had to get it approved, but I was able to accelerate writing this policy for a particular client. And the third area is just asking a question for this particular presentation. What does ChatGPT think I should be telling you about using it for IT? And you see several examples that it's giving you, but I will tell you, be careful with, with knowledge management, data analysis, and cybersecurity. The last thing that we want to do is share proprietary information with ChatGPT. We know it stores it. We know it's using it to get smarter. So if you're going to ask it a question, make sure you have some policies about not sharing proprietary information with your generative AI solutions. Now, if you want access to that, you, uh, that easy access to that InfoWorld article and to all of my articles, please do sign up for the Driving Digital Newsletter. And you can see the URL below, starcio.com slash DDS slash EP67 to get access to all of my writing. So I want to share with you three places where you can continue your learning. First and foremost, sign up for ChatGPT, experiment with it, make it personal, and see where you can find value. Every person I talk to is using it for a different use case, so sign up and start experimenting with it. Second, search for solutions out there that have generative AI capabilities. You can see the chart on the left-hand side. It's being used very regularly in many marketing departments to generate content. I don't think over the next five years there'll be a single marketing department that isn't using one of these capabilities. Uh, so continue to learn. There are more solutions coming out there every single week. And expand your learning around artificial intelligence topics. Power and Prediction is a great book on this topic. It separates out point solutions that are replacing 
steps in a process or an experience with an AI capability. So it's a build up type of solution that many organizations are using. But he says that the, the transformation to come, the disruption to come is with where entire systems are built from the ground up with AI capabilities. And it's going to change entire ways of how we build products and design workflows. So digital trailblazers, lifelong learners continue to learn about AI capabilities. I am Isaac Sokolik. I'm the author of two books on digital transformation. I lead a company called Star CIO that is your guide to enable digital transformation as a core organizational competency. I read 120 articles every year and speak at over 60 events. I hope you will sign up for the Driving Digital Stand-Up video channel, and I look forward to seeing you at future episodes. Have a great day.